All right, so first guitars first, we have the Explorer. Now, this is just a standard, your standard run-of-the-mill X input guitar, uh, you know, just USB, nothing uh, nothing special. There are a couple of tweaks that you need to have uh, just so that this thing doesn't activate anything that you don't want it to. If we click on pads uh, in RPCS3, you're going to go ahead and click on handlers in the upper left corner and go down to X input. Now, I think this guitar registered itself as, oh, player three. So I believe it's three. Oh, yep, yes it is. You can tell by the analog sticks down uh, in the bottom right. That is actually the whammy for the right stick. So we'll get into this. We'll get into this right now. So um, with the device class, you're going to, uh, it's right here. And you're going to click that put it to guitar. We're going to leave it on Guitar Hero and there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to need to change right off the bat. So first things first, uh, in the trigger thresholds area right here, we're going to just drag these top ones all the way to the left. Now, uh, what this actually does for us is that it makes it impossible for uh, whatever the L2 and R2 triggers actually do. And what they actually do is activate solo buttons. And now for some reason, even if this is going off in the Guitar Hero class, it would still actually activate a solo button. So we don't want it to work that way. And um, we don't want our normal buttons to be solo buttons in a solo section, because if they are, then it'll auto strum for us. And Where's the fun in that? So we're just going to have it function normally by putting the trigger thresholds all the way to the left. That being done, um, we're also going to uh, shift our focus over to triangle and square. So for some reason or whatever, the device class flips Y and X. So that's yellow and blue. You're going to want to click filter noise and then map triangle to blue and square to yellow. And then that way, the yellow and blue will not be flipped when you're playing in-game. And that's pretty much it with uh, X input guitars. Next one that we're going to move on to is the Rafnet Wii guitar. So probably the most, uh, probably one of the more uh, popular guitars that is being used in the current year. I know a lot of you guys uh, got one of these out there. I think the initial blow-up of Clone Hero, pretty much we, we all moved to Wii guitar meta. Um, and I'm just going to plug this directly in uh to the pc and not with any usb extender um one thing to note uh is that this is not a this is a v2 rafnet adapter and i believe i'm running the latest firmware if you're running a v1 rafnet adapter i believe you have to be on like you have to be on one of the earlier firmwares for it to work on rpcs3 i don't know why but um that's just in my testing that's just what we had to do we had to put it on a lower firmware um do not be on an ex experimental firmware. If you're on experimental, I don't think RPCS3 recognizes it. Um, and then V3, just let it be on stock. L uh, let it be on a stock firmware if you're running a V3 Rafnet adapter. Um, I think that might still be the same with the, uh, the dual classic controller adapters as well. Um, so now that we have it all hooked in, uh, we're going to go back into pads on our PCS3, and it will no longer be um, using the X input handler. Instead, it'll be using the MM joystick handler. So uh, it should be under joystick one. I don't know if it would go under two or three, but it definitely is on my screen because you can see the whammy bar in the bottom right corner is being activated. Um, this is joystick one. So um, same thing going on. This doesn't have a tilt sensor, so we don't have to worry about trigger thresholds, but we do have to map the face buttons properly. And to do that properly, we're going to click filter noise so that the analog sticks or the whammies um, are being muted when we're, uh, when we're mapping. So cross is going to be green. Circle is going to be red. Triangle is going to be blue. And square is going to be yellow. Um, just because of the flip. And also I forgot to set the device class, so that's okay. But all, all the uh, all the mapping stayed the same. Um, and here's where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, L1 is orange, but as you can also see, it mapped to button five on L2. And we're gonna actually have to edit our config profile after this so that we can unmap it. Our PCS3 doesn't have any unbinding solution um, within, uh, within the emulator, so we have to do this through notepad. I don't know why they, they definitely need to add a uh, 
unbind button. I don't know why they don't have one. And then select and start need to be bound as well. So select and start. And then we're gonna make sure um, the D-pad up and down strum bar. Lastly, with the analog stick dead zones uh, for the right stick down here, you're gonna wanna make the red circle just appear a bit, just like that. And um, if your analog stick, if your little blue dot is not um, going that far to the left, if you're running Windows, I know a solution to this, and that's to run um, uh, setup USB game controllers. Uh, if you run U uh, setup USB game controllers, um, it can calibrate the axis within Windows so that it, it uses like the full range of the whammy bar rather than just it staying in the middle the whole time. Um, you're going to want to click on your RAFNET adapter right here, click properties, and then you'll see right here that um, probably the, probably by default the Z-axis would be halfway, but since I did a calibration on it, it is using as much of the range as possible. Um, this might not even show up for you first try, so you're going to go to settings and then calibrate and then just follow the instructions from there. So we're going to go ahead and click save, and it's going to go, hey, MM joystick button 5 was uh, assigned twice. So, um, yeah, basically what would happen, it, it would make our orange button a solo button, and we don't want that. So uh, go ahead and continue, and we're going to go into our RPCS3 uh, root folder, go to config, input configs and then global and then default.yml make sure you open this with notepad notepad plus or whatever um and then uh we'll see right here for the handler mm joystick we're going to scroll down until we see l2 and then we're going to highlight all the letters there and just replace that with two um quotation marks uh, and then that that comments out any bindings whatsoever we're going to go hit file and save and we're going to be done and then go back into the pads you'll see that l2 is successfully unbound um so yeah that's how you get a wii guitar working um and once again make sure you are on like if you're on a v1 raft net make sure like second to last second to latest uh firmware um v2 make sure you're just on the regular latest firmware no experimental no beta firmwares same with v3 um, and if it doesn't show up, then just like keep going down the list of firmwares, keep flashing the uh, the RAFNET adapter so that it does work. Um, but yeah, wait, actually, wait, why why is a uh, why is button eight? Wait, hold on, was that was it select? Oh god, filter noise. Yeah, but oh my god, button eight, whack. Okay, yeah, we're gonna have to comment that one out too. Where's uh where's R one button eight? Quotation quotation, save unbound see yeah if you want to unbound anything then just you know you just replace it with quotation quotation also i kind of wanted to conduct a little bit of an experiment right here um right here i have the meo adapter this runs for about eight dollars on amazon this is just your run-of-the-mill classic uh classic controller adapter to usb latency isn't great but hey it's uh it's an adapter so that you can have a wired you know Turn a wireless guitar into a wired one, so Oh. Oh wait, 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 wait. We actually uh I think it actually does work now. I just had to do a a really quick um remapping. Hold on. Cross. Yeah. Nice. Okay. So the MEO adapter does work. This is an eight dollar eight dollar adapter on Amazon, you guys. Um, yeah, wow, what the hell? That's crazy. Okay, uh, select, nice. Start, nice. Okay, and then, sh uh, strum up. Strum down. <laughs> hell yeah, the whammy bar doesn't work. They they didn't program that for this adapter, or else that would have been goaded, honestly. So, uh, there you go, MEO adapter. Honestly, I kind of want to check out how this feels. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie with, uh, I'm not gonna lie with that. That's cool. MEO adapter does work. I just had to do a quick, uh, a quick little recalibration because it wasn't showing up in the gamepad settings. So, um, yeah. So if you do have the MEO adapter, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, um, this is just like your run of the mill, like eight dollar classic controller to USB adapter. But if you got a Wii guitar laying around, you want to play wired. There you go. There you go. So this just leads me to believe that any run of the mill adapter, whether you get on like like eBay or something or Amazon. Whatever, it, it should just work. Whether it be for PS2, whether it be for Wii, um, 
it should just work, you guys. I can't specifically say for wireless PlayStation 2 guitars. I loathe those things. I only owned one ever, and it was terrible. Um, but, hey, I mean, like, with enough persistence, with enough testing through here, with enough calibration through here, and then, um, you know, just uh, enough filter noise, and then just uh, doing the face buttons properly, um, any guitar will work fine. So, there you go. That, there's the guitar setup, you guys. Um, enjoy. 